For those who don't know my story, when I was 12 years old, I was diagnosed with Tourette's and I was on medication for almost 10 years. When I was 21, I learned something called The Secret and I came off the medication overnight against everyone telling me to stay on it and I had a spiritual awakening. I meditated for three weeks straight and my Tourette's disappeared and I created the podcast to simply preach about everything that most people have in their head but no one ever speaks about, which is what the twitching was. It was too many thoughts inside my head and now I have a platform where I can speak to people and they can get out what's in their head if you want to speak to me and ask me questions twitter now have this new feature called spaces where you can do a live call with me and ask me questions and speak to me so follow me on twitter yes king oliver and uh come and have a chat and if you want to follow me on instagram and see what stories i post also yes king oliver <clears throat> so um let's get going with the main thing that i really want to hear about which is you healed your Crohn's disease, which apparently is unhealable. Correct, according to science. <laughs> right, so tell, tell me what you did and tell me the whole story. Yeah, so it was actually a long process. So I was officially diagnosed when I was 21. Prior to that, it was lots of uh, in and out visits with GPs and doctors. And I keep hearing the same thing. They don't know what's wrong with me. They can't explain any of the symptoms it's probably just down to stress and then obviously when they dig deeper and they did biopsies and everything that's when they diagnosed me with Crohn's and uh, so my lifestyle back then was pretty stressful because I was in a extremely toxic relationship which is where Crohn's emerged from one thing I learned uh, throughout the years is that if you don't deal with an emotion, it has to go somewhere within your body, whether it's stress, sadness, it evolves into some sort of illness. And that's exactly what happened with Crohn's. So for a long time, I just hated it. I thought it was out to get me and it was life changing, especially my social life, because of course, uh, I never knew what type of symptoms would get triggered. And, uh, Many times I had to a last minute cancel plans because, uh, you know, the, 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 the symptoms were just extremely difficult to deal with. And I didn't want anyone to see me in that uh, situation. I'm an extremely optimistic person, very happy all the time. So um, I felt like Crohn's was taking over my personality and actually really affecting me. Uh, in all levels. Um, so what I, for a very long time, I just did what doctors told me, just simply take the medication. And uh, the information I was given is that there's absolutely no cure for Crohn's, that even with all the medication and steroids and operations that you could undergo, I would never be healed. So in my brain, these were the words that stuck, I would never be healed. So I just believed what I was told because um, that's what you do. You trust your uh, diagnosis, which is done by a professional. But with time, I kind of got fed up with hearing, you can't heal yourself, you have to live with it. There is no solution. And I said, no, I have to find something. Something inside of me triggered um, the, the curiosity, just like a child is curious to find out what else is out there. So, that's exactly what I did. Uh, in 2020, January 2020, I started looking into what other options there were apart from just using medication. And one thing I found was that there is so much that we don't know. When you think you know a lot, you literally know nothing. And I got introduced to Joe Dispenza, obviously not personally, that would have been great if I had met him. Uh, I read um, his books, I watched so many of his videos, and I actually did his meditations, which are really focused on healing. I also um, developed a strong bond with uh, the stuff, the material, the books, the teachings that Louise Hay provided. And one particular book that really struck me was The Powers Within You, where she explains that nothing happens to you without your consent, even an illness. And the first time you hear that, it can be quite, you know, shocking because you think, I never asked for, for this, you know, why are you trying to say that I caused this? But as you start to sit down, without you realizing, there have been signals in your body telling you to, to wake up. Um, 
And one of the signals was obviously that I was getting extremely stressed with the toxic relationship I was in. And instead of focusing on myself and giving myself the self-love that I needed, I just focused on somebody else, which is what, you know, we as humans do sometimes. But um, as I started learning about more what they had to teach, and I'm a great believer that knowledge is power, but implementing knowledge is so much more powerful. And I started practicing everything they were saying. I saw Crohn's not as an enemy, but as a friend, because it taught me so many extremely valuable lessons. One of the biggest is to, to love myself and put myself first, because that's not selfish, that's actually self-loving. And as I started to see Crohn's not as in something negative, but as something that was driving me forward, and picturing myself, visualizing myself as being healed. Within um, six months, I noticed that there was a shift inside of me, that the pains I had, the symptoms I had stopped. The moment I started doing the work that Joe Dispenza suggests with his meditations, and also speaking to myself differently and to the illness differently, I realized that I no longer needed medication. So I took the initiative and I stopped. I informed my doctors and they said, obviously, um, that, you know, I could do what I wanted because there was no risk in me stop taking it. And they just wanted me to uh, come back uh, three months later just to check up on me and do regular checks. That's exactly what I did. Little did I know that uh, two weeks later after doing my final check, I would get a call from my doctor saying, I can never forget his words, Sonia, I have no idea what you've done. Whatever it is, I don't want to know, but just keep doing it. And um, I just simply said to him, it was using my mind to tell my body exactly what I wanted it to do. And instead of seeing the physical, which was the pains, the symptoms, and letting my life be led by the physical, I actually took control, took the power back as Louise Hay explains in The Power Is Within You. And they actually sent me a letter with the results showing the clearance and that in 25 years of practice, they've never had anybody walk into um, the clinic and walk out healed from Crohn's. So that's my story. So to this day, in the doctor doctor's world, once you've got Crohn's, you've got Crohn's forever. You can't be healed. You can take medication to, to manage it. But there really is no way to heal it. And yet you did the opposite and said, fuck the doctors. I'm going to heal it. And you found a way to heal it. And to put it simply, our words are vibrations. And we respond to the feeling of what we think and what words we're hearing. And our body is is vibrating and everything is functioning based on the vibration and based on the thoughts and the words you were talking to yourself and your body about your body responded to the high frequencies of like self-loving words like i'm going to be healed i love myself i'm amazing i'm going to live forever all these high frequency words that your body will listen to and your body responds just like when you put a plant in front of a window of sun it suddenly grows or if you put it outside to get fresh air it will suddenly grow if you give it a little water after you've watered it for a few weeks what happens is suddenly leaves start to um straighten up and the stem starts to straighten up i actually watered my plant yesterday after a week of not watering it it was a bit droopy and now it's suddenly straight and our body's literally no different how if you talk to it and treat it like it should be it will perform like it should and everything in life is supposed to live not die not like it dies eventually but we're supposed to live and create as opposed to self-destruct and die within ourselves and you know my story of healing Tourette's is very similar i use all these meditations and self-love to tell myself that it's all bullshit i believe that it can't be healed so i didn't do anything but as soon as you realize it can be healed and what you're telling yourself is what your body's responding to i help myself and I heal Tourette's through meditation. You healed your Crohn's through mixtures of meditations and self-love. And really just telling yourself that I'm not going to accept what I've just heard. I'm going to create the life exactly how I want to live. And so many people, I was in like the shop yesterday and I saw this man getting medication for 
some I don't know what it was, but he was going to the counter, the chemist, getting medication, probably for, for some pain or something. And all he's doing is he's numbing the pain. But the real problem is, let's just say he's a truck driver and he sits down all day and his back's in a shitty position. So now he's taking medication. There's no pain. He's still sitting in that truck in a shitty position. He's now putting more pressure on his back. He can't feel the pain, which is creating more problems. And then you go back to the doctor, you get more medication. And it's like when Michael Jackson died, just watching his thing on Netflix right now. Michael Jackson uh, was doing a show and his hair caught a light. I think this is the story. And he was in pain. So his doctor gave him pain medication. And then you know, other things happened from that pain medication. His body basically went into overdrive of drugs and he ended up dying. And so many rappers and singers and actors um, all die from the same thing. It's, it's, it's not every single time, but it's mainly prescription drugs. If you look at the stories of all these people that have died, it's mainly prescription and it's mainly kind of pain related or numbing pain emotionally or physically. Yeah, there is like cocaine overdoses and stuff like that, but it's mainly prescription drugs. So when you think about that, that's crazy and scary because if, if you've just proved, and we've both proved that you can heal yourself physically and mentally through simply putting your body back in the state it should be in, and yet majority of the world run to the doctor, take a pill, and they follow exactly what the doctor says, and they're on that medication forever, and that disease, mentally, physically, is in their body forever, and we know that literally everyone dies of a disease eventually, what does that say? It's man that is the problem, which is creating the disease from the get-go, and keeping our body in that disease, and that should be very scary for, for people. Um, we literally do have all the healing powers within us, and it scares the shit out of me when I see people like just taking medicine and you know they're going to be on it forever whether it's antidepressants whether it's painkillers i mean even like e-cigarettes and nicotine the whole point of these fucking things are so people get off the cigarettes but now people are starting smoking e-cigs for the sake of it now they're getting their body addicted to nicotine and then what i mean it's, it's just a fucking joke it's no one has any control over themselves we're just following this illusion of a system that we think we should be following peer pressure at school, doctors, government saying get a job, you know, go to university, everyone's paying 40 grand off for the rest of their life, which is just not realistic. No one even really gets a job in the industry they trained in. It's all a big scam, everything. And we, we, yeah, you said it perfectly. Put yourself first, another second. It's not selfish. You've got to love yourself. Because we see what happens when people put other people first, <clears throat> they end up getting taken down. And the person who you're trying to help ends up drowning anyway, because you have to be independent yourself. <clears throat> I totally agree with you. I think one of the biggest lessons in life, well, what I was raised, um, I was always told, oh, yeah, think of the others. But little did you know that if you did that, um, at the end of the day, you end up going, it's like having a friend and you do everything for that friend. And then that friend doesn't do something for you. And then you just turn around and say, well, I've invested all this energy and all this time thinking about you. And then one time I ask you to think about me you don't do it back. And the reason why is because you don't do it yourself. You can't expect someone else to treat you differently if the very thing that you want, you don't do it yourself. Um, and that's exactly the, the, the simplest example I like to give is, let's say you're in, you're in a relationship and you, as a woman, speaking as a woman, you, you like flowers, but your partner hasn't given you any for a very long time. My question is, when was the last time you gave yourself flowers? Because the reason why I say that is because people always learn from example. He don't say, don't do what I say, but actually do what I do. That's the one thing I'm very um, into because anyone can say anything, but actually show it is a completely different perspective. And that's exactly what I did with Crohn's. I didn't tell anybody what I was doing because even though, well, I kind of shared little um, bits of information and the reaction I was getting back from family and friends was like, oh, Sonia, you're going into an illusion. You know, you're eluded. If the medication can't help, it's impossible that training your mind will do the trick. And I was like, mm, I'm very independent. I like to do what, you know, my gut tells me. And that's exactly what I did. I said, you know what? 
sometimes the best things are unsaid and only say them once they've been achieved. Because unfortunately, we live in a world where if you don't show the results, people don't believe you. So I know that obviously to achieve anything in life, you need to believe it first before it can be seen in the physical world. But the the people who surround us doesn't mean that they what they're saying is wrong. It's just what they know, because they can only give you based on the knowledge and awareness that they have at the time. So I chose to keep quiet. Whenever anyone asked me about it, I just said, nope, I'm still taking care of myself in my own way, but I wouldn't go into details. Only when I show them the letter that the doctor sent me from the hospital as proof, they then said sorry. And I said, I don't want to expect you to say sorry. Um, it's okay, because we've all been there at times. We've all been there when someone said, I can do this. And you're not telling them in a negative way that they can't do it. It's just, it's what you know, based on what other people have told you, the environment you've lived in. So it's doing something for yourself. And one thing I have learned is if you want to do something for yourself, keep quiet about it until it's been accomplished. Because every word, as you said, um, is energy. And if you surround yourself with too much negative energy and too many negative words, it's going to demotivate you completely. But the one person you need to trust is yourself. And obviously, the results may take time. It took me six months, but I wasn't focused on the results. I was focused on one little aspect, just feeling better within myself. And I wasn't focused on the end goal. I was focused on the step by step I was taking every single day and the little changes that these step by steps were helping me achieve. <clears throat> yeah, so that, that's um, <clears throat> triggering off when I took the, the, to the steps, uh, you know, healed the Tourette's. Everyone around me, you know, my whole life, you can't heal it. It gets better as it gets older, but it's there forever. And then I came across The Secret and Bob Proctor and Joe Dispenza and Abraham Hicks and all saying the same thing that, you know, what you tell yourself is your reality. You can hear yourself from within. And I remember when I took it in my own interest or intuition, whatever you want to call it, on my own back to stop taking my medication for Tourette's. It's powerful shit. This shit nowadays used to get schizophrenia. It's called Risperdone. Uh, it used to be called Risperdol. And you basically just hijacks your brain and stops you from thinking, which is what all the twitching was. It's built up thought that wasn't processed. And the swearing was the frustration of trying to think, which I couldn't do because it slowed my brain down. And I remember coming off medication overnight as opposed to gradually, because I knew I just had to clear my system as quick as possible. Um, <clears throat> to think straight, to understand everything. And everyone around me, neighbors, friends and family, everyone was reaching out to me on, on Facebook, you know, because they knew what I was doing because I was posting everything online. I was writing on my walls and shit. <laughs> um, and uh, people people got saying to me, you've got to take your meds, you've got to take your meds. Everyone was saying, you've got to take your meds, you can't come off your fucking meds. And guess what? These fuckers are all taking meds for all kinds of shit. Anxiety, back pain, an insomnia, you know, People taking drugs to sleep. How about fucking meditate, get off your damn phone, you know, sort your diet out, exercise. I mean, all these things that people take medicine for in replacement of what they should be doing. And I had to pretend, I had to learn magic through like Darren Brown and David Blaine and Dynamo to take my tablet or make my parents think I've taken my tablet, but I haven't actually done it. So I had to learn illusion and, and like mindfulness and hand control. So make them think I've taken it but I haven't because if I've taken it then it's in my system and then I remember once I think I puked it out after I took it and I had to get I had to get through this like you know couple of weeks to get out of my system like three four weeks to get it out because you have to get out for a period of time I was on it for like nine years and eventually it was out my system and my head was the clearest it ever been. I understood everything. I saw why doctors trying to put me on it, why parents and neighbors saying, you should take your meds. I saw everything so clearly and I didn't hate anybody. I understood everybody. Like when you, your family said, I'm sorry, Sonia. It's like, you didn't have to say sorry. You only knew what you knew. It's like, if your family speak uh, Chinese and um, they come across a African person, the f first thing they'll do is speak to them in Chinese. That's all they know. They don't know any different. So when people think that this is the way life should be, it's not their fault. And it's almost like, you know, back to bullying at school. When you understand a bully bullies you because they see something in you that they haven't got, it's not personal. In fact, it's a blessing that they're basically saying in a horrible way, you have something that I have and I wish I had it. 
kind of a blessing at the moment you're like why is everyone bullying me why do people hate me why do people spit on me but when you look back in time you realize wow they just wanted love and attention from say family they didn't get and they saw i had that and again that's a blessing and it goes back to counteracting and flipping every negative thing in your life and i remember when i used to be on this casino flow i used to go to the casino and basically put a pound on zero for four hours and then eventually i'd be up because i was just like one in 36 i have to get it once within 36 and i'll be a profit and i remember just trusting my own intuition at that point and i used to go so many times a week and every time i would win i knew i would win i could even predict when it was going to come in and then i started telling my mum what i was doing and she was like, you're not going to win. You're going to lose it. You'll see that I'm right. So, so, so negative, right? And guess what? Every single time I told her, every single time, I ended up losing money and not making any money and coming home. So the fact my mum was negative really affected me. And so the lesson is, even with a business idea, don't put out your business idea until you've done it. Because naturally, we want to feel good. We want praise and credit. If you tell your parents something like, oh, I'm going to not go to uni, I'm going to start a business, or I'm going to go to the army. They'll be like, are you joking? Don't be so ridiculous. Just get a job. That's negative. That lowers your motivation and your determination and your drive, which means you've got less energy to go out and get what you want. And, you know, every single thing we hear around us in our surroundings really affects how we think and how our body reacts. Our body reacts to not only the, the actual vibrations of their sounds, but how your body interprets that information and then streams that energy down to the rest of your body. Um, I know somebody who I met at my spa, his mum was diagnosed with stage four cancer, pretty much a few months to live. The person whose son knows what we know about all self-healing. He took her out the hospital. He said, mum, you're not doing chemo because if you do, we're just going to weaken your body even more and you will have no hope. So he made her do ice baths, take shit out of vitamin D, oxygen chamber, exercise, change your diet, forgave people, made her watch films and do all the fun, amazing things that we should be doing, having a laugh, drinking pure high alkali water and all these other things and methods that, you know, all these great teachers individually tell us like Wim Hof and ice baths, Joe Dispenza and, you know, meditation and Dr. Gundry and diet. And um, she went back to another doctor. I think it was like six months later. And they said, yep, you've got stage two cancer. And what they didn't say is that the other doctor said she's stage four cancer. She should be dead by now. So the doctor literally responded to the state of her body at that time. And I said, yep, you're stage two cancer. It's um not spreading that much to the point where you'll die. But, you know, stay in contact and um, we'll monitor it. But they didn't know that she should be dead by now. So, again, if she'd listened to the doctor that she had fucking three months to live, whatever it was, she would be dead. If you'd listen to your doctor, you'd be still having Crohn's. I would still have Tourette's. I know somebody who I did a podcast with who healed Lyme's disease through breath work. It just doesn't end, all these stories. Yeah, it's true. It's it's becoming more um, of a theme that uh, you are more powerful than you think you are. And, uh, com you know, in relation to the story you just said about the, the patient with the uh, cancer, so once I achieved what I achieved with healing Crohn's, which is, uh, according to doctors, a non-curable uh, chronic disease, um, my auntie got diagnosed with cancer. And uh, she chose to do all the treatment. And I said to her, whatever choice you make, I'm here to help you um, through meditation and through therapy. Exactly what I did throughout the whole progress. And doctors were absolutely shocked how she responded so well to such an intense um, treatment that they said 70% of the patients don't make it. Can and, you go into detail on that? Yeah, so she she told them exactly what she did. She said, oh, I worked with my niece. She helped me every single week with therapy, every single week with meditation, and she helped me train my mind uh, that I was going to you know, be better. I even made her a visualization audio where she could see herself walking into the hospital corridor, walking through her doctor's room and imagining the exact words that she wanted to hear from him, that she was healed, that she was completely clear 
no sign of it. And that's exactly the words that were in the audio that the doctor said to her. So I know it sounds uh, very simple, but it's, it, it's as simple as it can get. And sometimes as humans, we just overcomplicate things because we think that things come easy, that, you know, it's too easy, but actually it's not. It's just how we choose to see it. And my auntie, she, she couldn't be any more grateful to me, bless her. I said to her, I didn't do anything. The only thing I did was show you a way that was different to what everybody else was showing you. And it takes one person to, to say one positive thing that that becomes the belief that you choose to believe in and that becomes your reality. Yeah, so, um, you know, you know, Nico, um, he's going to be, you know, moving at some point because mm -hmm. he needs to be around more people like himself, driven, um, creative and all these things that reflect your own person. And I said, you just need one person to believe in you, like, a, a parent growing up if you want to be say the next biggest singer or actor you just need one parent or even a, even an auntie or grandma or anybody to believe in you and that's all you need all these people like kanye and you know kanye just had his mum telling him how great he was i my dad telling me how great i was all these actors you know i'm sure there's loads like will smith's dad just was the only mentor you needed to get you through and like with your auntie she just needed one person to give kind of unlimited time for that period to get her through and that's all you need and it's like the school system is fucked because how are you supposed to teach 30 people in a class it's information that each individual has their own way of understanding and you have to ask, ask questions back and then they give the answer and then you have a follow-up question you can't simply teach a class by simply projecting in all this information and then your brain just listens and it's there for life. It's just nonsense. Um, so, you know, the importance of having one person just to constantly monitor you is crucial, but so rare, even a doctor, yeah? Doctors say, come back in three months. Well, that's bullshit. You might as well not come back at all. You need to have like every day follow up, not back in three months because Christ, it's like being, it's like a child being led with its parents around a supermarket and then the kid, the mother goes off, comes back three months later. The child doesn't know where the fuck he is, where you've gone, where, where he's going to go. He's just going to sit there or more importantly, just get lost. And then you never see them again, which is, you know, the point of no return. Um, yeah, that's, that, 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 that's been done for that bit. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a, it's a, it's a very good point. It just takes, um, a holding hand but uh, but at the same time um speaking for anybody who's obviously in in live call listening even if you don't have someone who supports you that's what you think because you have the most reliable person you can have and that's yourself because an example i always like to use is everybody else can can drop you but the one person who can't drop you is yourself let's say you trip uh, on the street and there isn't anybody around who's going to pick you up you are so even if you don't have anyone around you at all parent sibling partner you do it for you because people can only give you what they have and you have to give yourself what you need because if you rely on the external world to give you what you need you'll always find disappointment because unfortunately Many of those who surround us in our environments only believe what their eyes see, but not what their hearts trust. So that's me on that one. <laughs> <clears throat> um, so tell me more information about, you know, without mentioning names, um, I believe and you can, well, I believe that it can be done, but you also do this. OCD can be healed through multiple methods, but go into detail of why somebody may create or have OCD and what has to happen in terms of the rewiring of the brain to counteract it to the point where people don't do their things anymore, their their little habits, let's just say, routines. Sure. So um, obviously, uh, as a therapist um, on my channel, I'll explain more about that, what exactly what I do. But uh, when it comes to OCD from working with um, previous um, patients, 